Hey guys, my name is Jason with SMJ Forest Products. And when we do a lot of our sawmill stuff, I get cutoffs and ends that I can't use, or we have a 14 foot log and the customer only wants a 10 or a 12. So we have all these cutoffs. And today on this video, I'm gonna try making mason bee houses out of them. So the first thing I gotta do is take these beams over to a friend's house and get them cut down to a smaller size so we can drill our holes in there so the bees have a spot to net. So the first thing we gotta do is get these pieces cut down into eight inch chunks. So we're just running through this table saw here. We've got to do two cuts, but we're cutting them eight inches wide so we can drill six inch holes in them. And there we go, 12 of the six by six and three of the six by tens. That worked out really well on that little table saw. Well, now we're down in my dad's basement. I just keep moving around to different people's places to use their tools. But we're going to work on getting these drilled. And I got a little system I'm going to try out to mark out the drill pattern on these. So let's give this a try and see how it works. All right, so I got this one inch piece of hardware cloth. And if I just take a hammer and Hopefully the idea is just tap down on the mesh. And there's our lines that way. Uh-oh. The block will hold still. Me for you. There we go. It's kind of a one inch square mesh pattern. Let's see if that works. All right. I'm just going to line it up right where the lines cross. Well, that didn't work great. The wood's real wet. I can only get down about three and a half or four inches on the shank there. And so we're gonna have to come up with a better method here. What do you think, Sienna, a better method? Uh, yeah, the, I, I can barely even fit my finger in there. Yeah. The bees can barely even get out, poor little bees. Yeah, well, and I think bees are way bigger than that. We'll have to try something different. Well, we're gonna try manual here. Uh, just get it lined up. The key is to keep it nice and straight. There we go, kinda works. I think what I'm gonna do is get them drilled out. The log or the wood's still real wet. So I'm going to get them drilled out, let them dry for a month or two, and then ream them out again. Well, I got them all drilled out. That spade bit did not work very well. I used just a metal cutting bit like that. And that worked the best so far, actually. But I can't get them down six inches. These only go down about four inches there. So what we're going to try is this wood cutting bit. We got one of these. It's got cutters on the face. And hopefully that'll cut and then auger it out with this wet wood. It was also, let me get the light down here so you can see. It was also a little hard to get the holes kind of cleaned out. I guess they look okay. But hopefully with this, we can get the depth we need. See, I've got a lot, I've got four more inches to go there. 
and it'll help clean out the holes, make a nice smooth bore. So we'll try this next. Well, I'm back in these mason bee houses and it's been a couple months, so I can't quite remember what the last shot was, but I think I was working with these big, huge blocks, these cutoffs from the sawmill, and I was trying to get these holes, see those holes there? I'm trying to get those holes drilled out with a six or seven inch drill bit. And I've got to make sure that I don't go through the back, right? Because they got to have a bottom to their hole. But this is a real pain trying to get down six inches with that self augering drill bit and then pull it back out and just didn't work very well for me. So I came up with another idea that I want to try. I've taken uh, three two by sixes and just screwed them together. And I drilled out a whole bunch of holes in there. I don't know if this will work. But what I've done is I've drilled all the way through. So these go all the way through the back. And what I'm going to do is it was way easier. I could drill all the way through with the drill bit, have it come out the other side, ream the holes out a little bit, get them all cleaned out. And now I'm going to just take another 2x6 and screw it on the back so it'll have a back plate on it. And I want to see if mason bees will, will get in this thing and nest in here because this is so much easier and I have a lot more of these little cutoffs than these, these big beam cutoff things that I was trying to do earlier. And that way it takes not very long to drill all these holes if you can go through and then just screw a back plate on. So uh, let me get a back plate screwed on here and then we'll go out and, and put it up next to my other mason bees and see if they start nesting here because it's right at the end of April. They're really active right now and this is the time I got to get my, my nesting boards out there. So we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this belt sander. It's got 40 grit on it. I'm just going to clean up the face here a little bit. Now I can get those holes cleaned up a little bit and I'll do the back so I have a nice smooth surface to mate with. Okay, I also had a little bit of a split right here on the last hole. I was going to add some bigger holes, so I had a half inch and it came right up next to that knot and it split that whole board all the way up, which is kind of irritating. But the other thing I'm going to try here, since we're all into experimenting, is I'm going to just block off half of the holes, so the bottom ones down there won't have a back on them and I'll see if that makes a difference. Maybe the bees don't need a back and they'll just they'll use these holes down here anyway I'm not sure we're gonna experiment because I guess the whole deal is how little work do we have to do right? So let me get this screwed on the back so these top holes here all have a back on them we'll leave some on the bottom without and see what happens. Well it's a cool morning so they're not very active. But there's one perched on top of the house there. And they just plug all their all their little holes with mud, lay their eggs in there. I almost flew down my shirt. But they seem to really like the bamboo ones on the side first, and then they go for these middle holes kind of last. Here's another one down here. Most of the bamboo ones are plugged and now they're working on the middle ones. Here's a little cedar one I did out of the block, and that's all plugged, so they like that one. But now here's this one. So I'll check back in a couple weeks and see if there's any bees coming in and out of here. Well, it's been about a month. We're at the end of May now, and the mason bees are pretty much all dormant. And I don't know if you can tell from the first shot from this shot but it looks like a lot of the holes are now filled especially in the middle here on these other houses down here as well they filled up all the middle ones 
So they were quite active since the last month. And then looking over here, unfortunately we don't have anything going on except for right there. We got one mason bee, I think, filled that hole in the top. That's one of the ones that's backed. So I don't know if they really don't prefer this or what, but they really didn't use it. So maybe this is not a good way to do mason bees. So maybe this is a video on, on how not to do mason bees. I don't know. You guys decide. Let me know what I did wrong. Let me know if there's a better way to do this. I like these mason bees. They're definitely good pollinators. So let me know with a comment below. Thanks for watching.